Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Indies Trusted Servant Show on inspiresmall.biz slash Indies Trusted Servant. I want to thank Ryan Henry of inspiresmall.biz for the opportunity to bring uh, small business people and not-for-profits and just people that are interesting to the airwaves here on inspiresmall.biz. Uh, What's Indy's Trusted Servant? Well, that's me, Danny O'Malley. I do customer service training and keynote speaking about customer service. It's all about the culture of the organization, be it a business or a not-for-profit. I learned all of that from the hand of the master, my late father, Joe O'Malley, in the O'Malley food market days, but even before then, when he owned a little grocery store in Broad Ripple, where the Vanguard Bar is now, and I was about nine years old, and he ultimately lost that uh, little grocery store. But he came back 10 years later and started O'Malley's, and one of the things I learned was never, ever, ever give up. Um, and my dad is, was not one to give up. Uh, what's the Indies Trusted Servant Show on InspireSmall.biz? I like to describe it as lively local small biz and community talk where you can feel the pulse of Indy. And today's guest is my good friend and client, Albert Gonzalez of Teachers Credit Union, mortgage division and uh, Albert is my go-to guy on the housing market in general, right? Sure. So Albert, introduce yourself to the viewers and uh, we'll go from there. Tell, I, tell them a little about yourself. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Albert Gonzalez and I'm with Teachers Credit Union, uh, born and raised in Marion, Indiana and then migrated to Indianapolis where I graduated from Lawrence North High School and then I attended Vincennes University and my first job out of college, ironically, was with <laughs> Indianapolis Fruit Company. Uh, they were kind enough to give me a job after school. And uh, one of my responsibilities incurred taking the O'Malley's grocery store produce orders um, during the second shift so that we could load, load those trucks in the morning and then deliver to all 10 of the O'Malley's grocery stores throughout Central Indiana. Yeah, yeah, for the uninitiated, the produce department is the, the, the one where the workers show up the earliest. That's correct. Right? So they got to get they get that produce rack set every day, and they're usually one of the last to leave. That's at, right. At night. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. So they would call their orders in to me, and then uh, I would uh, I would get those orders punched into the computer and get them ready for dispatch the following morning. And then after doing that for about seven years, a friend of mine recruited me to join the finance industry in writing mortgages, and I started that with Indiana Home Loan in 1996. So yeah. you've been doing this straight through since 1996? Straight through since 96, and I've seen some ups and downs. We've, uh, we're have we currently going into what I call our probably second housing recession, if you will. Well, um, and that's certainly the topic of the day, for sure. Um, and, and you've been with several different mortgage count companies over the years. I have. I have, and, and I finally landed with one that I feel I'm going to retire from in Teachers Credit Union. We have, uh, to me, the number one construction product in the business, in our market, we have the best ops team. I have a great team around me, including sales managers and our vice president of mortgage, Ryan Woodruff. Um, we just have built what I feel is the best construction program in the market. I want to come back to that, but let's talk about the housing market in general today. I know that it, it was just going gangbusters for a long time. It seems to be leveling off. Where are we now? So I think we are, we're, we're kind of experiencing a little pause or a pumping of the brakes, if you will. Uh, consumer confidence is down. And, and a couple of reasons for that is our interest rates have climbed up nationally to an average of middle fives to, to approaching 6%, which- And I how was, low had it gotten at, a, at the best point? At the best point, we were in the low twos. Um, and that was how long ago? So that started in March of 2020 when we started seeing uh, the rates climb under 3%. And, and quite honestly, we've been around 3% since 2011. So when people hear 5 or 6% on, on a mortgage rate, they feel Scares like them. it does scare them. But then I bring up, for example, in 1982, when my mom had a home in Castleton Estates on the northeast corner of Indianapolis, her interest rate was near 15% in the early 80s. And so I- The early say, 80s were not good. <laughs> well, they were good because that would suggest that you, it was more, it was affordable at that time to pay the 15%. So I think times are different. I don't believe we'll climb to quite that 
high of an interest rate and 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 we're we're predicting and all the experts are saying that we're predicting a a refinance boom in the latter part of 2023 or 2024. Another reason I think people are pumping the brakes is the cost of materials. Um, we're seeing like record increases, 30, 40 percent increases in lumber, uh, drywall, roofing, windows, and then in which those um, materials are delivered too. The, the cost of fuel has gone up. So right. I think that has, has kind of affected consumer confidence and, and then as well as the inventory. There, right. The, the supply, of, the supply chain is there's not a, enough a supply to to really provide the demand that we're, we're experiencing these days. So yeah, I think all those things are factors. Oh, it's a different industry, but I was listening to a guy on the radio a few days ago saying he ordered an automobile over a year ago and he still doesn't have it. Correct. Uh, that, that's pretty good indicator there that the supply thing is, is really, really out of whack. So what does that do to you? So, uh, you know, like you mentioned over the last three years, we've experienced uh, a housing boom that's been unprecedented. And we've seen, uh, just activity and volume, uh, from a monthly and a yearly basis that's just was unprecedented. And so we've really experienced a great deal of success over the last two and a half to three years. So I think this kind of pause is given some folks like myself a little chance to take a, take a little breather, kind of re regroup and then, and then head back in. But I still feel the construction market is booming. And back in 2016, I decided that I needed to have a true construction of perm product. And that's really what we're, we're marketing for currently. Let's let's get back to that in just a little bit. Um, you deal more in the high end market, for the most part, right? Predominantly, yes. Right, north side mostly, mm -hmm. right? That's right. So, wh what if what if you were a, a more of a mid range mortgage person? Uh, is, is are they is that more of a problem uh, for the mortgage people that are you know maybe dealing with people that weren't aren't quite as wealthy. So the median home value in, in central Indiana is, is right around 250,000. So that, that market, I think is still has some decent activity, but even in that range, they're still seeing a pause in the activity. Yeah. Uh, and, and really refinances are almost non-existent unless you need to pull some equity out of your house for either home improvements or consolidate debt. Okay. You just hit on an interesting topic, refinance. There are times when everybody in the world is refinancing. Correct. And then there are times when nobody's refinancing Now You're saying that the refinance market has gone away. It's kind of, yeah, it's, it's gone away, but, and, but there's still a, a little market out there. For example, um, if you're trying to do a home improvement project, you can use the equity in your home to fund that project. Or right. if you want to consolidate debt, if you've racked up some credit card debt and you want to consolidate that for a lower, even five and a half or 6% is probably a better rate that you're going to get on your credit card. Well, you dig on right. So yeah. it's, there's still some activity, but not quite as much. And I think we are kind of, kind of positioning ourselves for that refinance boom. Like I mentioned, uh, I think we're going to see that in 2024. Not till 2024, you think? Yeah, I think we're, you know, with the inflation and, and the way the feds are hiking up prime. In fact, prime rate went up to five and a half percent. That's the highest it's been in over 15 years. Um, so that's the rate in which banks lend money to each other. And they really, that sets the mark on credit cards, automotive, uh, and then eventually it affects the housing market rates as well. I know you're in touch with a lot of different groups like like the baggy, the, the uh the home builders and so on and so forth. What what are home builders saying these days? So I think everybody's not minding the pause and, and because we've been hair on fire for the last two and a half to three years. So I think everybody's kind of taking this opportunity to kind of regroup, restructure, uh, kind of gather some intel and, and just kind of get more efficient on the way we present these houses to, uh, to consumers. And if I may put a plug in for the Builders Association of Greater Indianapolis, of which I'm on the board, um, we are throwing a home show, and it's called Homerama. You might have seen this oh, yeah. advertised, yep. and we are kicking the show off on uh, Wednesday, September 21st, and that'll be a private show for the builders and associates and vendors, and then it officially kick gets kicked off on that next Thursday, which is September 22nd, and that's going to be hosted in Chatham Hills, which is located in Westfield, Indiana. Some of you might recognize Grant Park. Um, Chatham Hills was built just north of Grand Park, so right. it's fairly easy to get to off of uh, um, US 31. Um, 
the the home boat the, that show's been going on for years, right? Years, is it yes. an annual event? It is an annual event. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So we will kick that one off for 2022, and then the next. How, one, how long does it last? It's about two and a half weeks. There's three total weekends um, that encompass the show, and I think the show ends on October 10th. Okay, so the, you know we're we're uh, videoing this for S September 26, so there's still plenty of time left. That's right. If you'd like to get to this, uh, is there a website you can talk about you, there? You can just go to the Baggy.com website. So Builders Association of Greater, Greater Indianapolis. Indianapolis. So Baggy.com, and then you can book your tickets there, and uh, you can actually tour the homes either virtually or in person if you wish. Okay, okay. Wonder how, um, you know, obviously virtually or in person. Uh, were they doing that virtually before COVID? They, we were not. That's no. what I figured. And, and furthermore, so during COVID, we we offered the virtual touring uh, capability. And then also we started booking appointments for people to show up at a certain time. Whereas before, you could buy a ticket and you could come whenever you want. That, that, that's what I'm used to. Yeah, yeah. So now you have to actually let us know when you're going to attend. From like you're, If you're going to arrive at 1130, then we book you at 1130 and that you arrive then. It helps really uh, coordinate and structure the traffic of the show. How many homes are involved? We have seven homes in the show this year. Seven. Yes. Uh, and are they all on the same street? Yes, they're all yeah. they're all yeah. walkable. We'll have golf yeah. carts to take you to and from your car, and there'll be vendors with, with snacks and drinks and concessions and things like that. Um, and, so you, and you deal with uh, people, that, title insurance and the whole nine yards. That's right. Is, so, is everybody in the same frame of mind, you think? I think so. I think we all work hand in hand with whether it's an appraiser or a title company, builders and realtors and lenders like myself. We all kind of play nice in a sandbox. And really the goal is to provide the best experience for our end consumers and our, and our borrowers. So uh, we are all work hand in hand and communicate well so that uh, the buying and building process is as smooth as possible. Hey, I forgot to ask you, and you can tell me as much or as little as you want, but t t tell the folks about your family. So yes, uh, my brother Adam Gonzalez and my younger brother Fernando Gonzalez, they both live here on the north side of Indianapolis as well. Um, happy to say my brother Adam is presenting products named Viva Tia Maria, um, through Kroger and some other distri uh, distribution centers. Um, but if you. This is a type of beer. Th there, there's a type of beer also that's brewed through Sun King locally, and it's called Una. So Viva Tia Maria, if you look up those brands, you can find them in the, in the deli section at Kroger. He has a line of quesos, he has a line of salsas, he has a line of tamales, and now he's brewing a beer with Sun King. So it's very exciting stuff, very proud of him. And then my younger brother, not to be not mentioned, uh, he works with JTM, which is a manufacturer near Cincinnati. I know Ohio. JTM well. <laughs> yes, and so they, they have a lot of ready-made meals, and he handles the military contract nationwide. So oh. He flies approximately 125 to 150,000 miles a year and visiting these different military bases and distribution centers. And so since he is a veteran and served in Desert Storm, thank you so much. Um, he handles Thank you. the military contract for JTM. That's awesome. What about wife and kids? Wife and kids. Wife Jennifer Gonzalez. Uh, she's an interior designer with Everything Home, which is the design arm for Old Town Design Group, which is one of my custom builders. And then sons, uh, Aiden James Gonzalez, he's nine. And then my youngest son, Vinny, is seven. So they both attend um, Noblesville um, Community Schools. And, and they so play we, baseball. They play baseball <laughs> and they play football. Right now we're in full-fledged full uh, tackle football season. So... Uh, we're, we're very fortunate to get to see them grow and, th and thrive, and the Noblesville community is near and dear to our hearts. We have a big fan of Mayor Jensen, Chris Jensen, and his family and the things that they're doing for our community, and uh, there's just lots of big, fun things to come in downtown Noblesville. Stay tuned. That's, that's good to hear. One of, the, one of the things that I've always been amazed at, and it's, it's related to what we're talking about, when I was a young person, uh, uh, the difference between Carmel, Noblesville, Westfield, and Fishers was unbelievable in terms of there was countryside, you yes. know, these were little tiny towns. Yes. And now they're all really one big, yes. great place with, you know, you can go to dinner in the Fishers district, downtown Carmel. There's places in Noblesville to go. There's there Westfield, you know. It, it's unbelievable yeah, and, what's and, happened there. And, and and that's related to the housing market. It is. And, and, and don't forget Zionsville, uh, oh, yeah. which is yeah. one of my favorite communities. And, and I have to shout out to the Hinky family, uh, Steve, Brad, and Betsy, and then Doug Fleener. Uh, they're doing great things in Holiday Farms. They were hosting our home show in Chatham Hills this year. 
in to come in 2024, there's a new neighborhood called Promontory, uh, which in was, Zionsville. It's in Zionsville on the very northern tip of Zionsville, and it was um, the Throgmorton estate was located there. Okay, uh, the H. H. Gregg family. Yes, if you, yes. If you're familiar, with I'm them. familiar with them. So Promontory, look look to see that show come in 2024. These are monster two to three acre estates and they're going to be unbelievable homes we've seen the housing market uh, where what used to be the old million is now three million is kind of the standard in the mark on some of these custom homes oh yeah well of course hanky's the guy that did uh, bridgewater bridgewater right? started there yeah. yes yeah. yeah and then moved on to chatham hills and then now holiday farms and and again mark your mark your calendar for 2024 because we'll be up in zionsville again for the Homerama in the spring of 2024 in Promontory. Okay, let's talk a little bit about um, the Teachers Credit Union thing. You've been with them a couple of years? Going on year two, that's yep, right. Yep. And so Teachers Credit Union um, was founded by teachers. Um, we have a great story that you can go to our website and research some of the background. We just uh, we celebrated 90 years in business last year. And so um, heading towards 100 with, with open arms, we... We are very thrilled and happy to uh, present our amphitheater in downtown um, White River State Park Amphitheater. Is we have the naming rights. So oh, that's TCU. right. That's right. If you've not caught a show there, please please enjoy well, it while we still have some summer left. There you go. As, as you know, I'm a huge Indians fan. That's right. And what's nice about the amphitheater was before they built that, they had concerts. That's right. And the noise drifted over to the ballpark. That's right. Now it doesn't. Yes. Because you have an amphitheater. Yes. That's nice if you're at the ball game. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know, it's very easy access to get into and out of, and it's just I call it a mini Deer Creek, and I still call it, it is. Deer Creek. It is a mini it's Deer Creek. It is deer. still Deer Creek. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so it's, I call it a mini Deer Creek in downtown Indianapolis, and the, the environment and the atmosphere is just amazing. And if you like live music, you should come down and check out a show. I'm very See, proud of that. Seats about three thousand people. Yeah, I'd say three to five, including the the lawn yeah yeah okay yeah. great yeah. so uh what why are you why is teachers credit union now, and of course we can't get too commercial here sure right sure but uh we can brag a little bit yeah. why is teachers credit union the best place for the mortgage so in my opinion um it's it's the experience we provide to the consumer um from from application which you can do either online i personally like to take my loan applications either over the phone or in person. I kind of interview them, they're interviewing me. I hear their story and really what my role is is to kind of take a snapshot of their income, assets, credit and employment and try to paint a picture for our underwriters and try to tell that story as best I can for their what their motivation is for the loan, what the purpose is for the loan, whether it's a purchase, if you're building or if you're, or if you're doing a refinance, uh, if you're doing a renovation for, for some upgrades on your house. So my, my role is to tell that story and package it and present it to our underwriters with, with as much clarity as possible so that there's very few questions um, in, with regard to the underwriting process. And what makes us best is that process you're always communicated with. You have only two or three people that you're working with instead of being like an assembly line. And that that, that is an issue. It can if, be. If, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and things can get can slip through the cracks when there's more people that get involved. So once you get with me and then my assistant Megan Johnson, hey Megan, and then uh, we turn it over to Heather Friesner, which is then turns into your closer. And we're closing loans in under 30 days, which it takes most banks 45, 60, sometimes 90 days to get you to closing. Okay, that that sounds good. Now you were, you mentioned a particular product before. Yes, uh, construction of perm products. Talk so, about that. So what we do predominantly at what I feel best at TCU is our construction of perm loan. So if you're going to build a house and you need a loan, um, you should talk to me and my team at TCU. What we do is we. Do oh, before the, I forget, before you forget, sure. Give them contact information. So my Albert Gonzalez, I'm at Teachers Credit Union. Phone number three one seven six zero five. 3383 and email address is a d gonzalez with a z with two z's two not together <laughs> two z's yeah. at uh, tcunet.com so yeah so what we do is we just like a normal mortgage product we we still get you through underwriting we get you to closing once we close we then fund the build of your house in in different draws so once a builder gets done with your foundation, they'll request a draw of, let's say, $100,000. You start paying interest only on that 100000 until the next draw. Once it gets uh. framed, he might need another 100000 So now you're paying interest only on two hundred, and so on and so forth throughout the build. Our communication with our preferred builders 
is, is impeccable. Our draw process is very seamless. And people walk away high-fiving us. At the, and when they get the keys to their home, they, they feel like they've had a great experience. And uh, let's face it, it's never fun gathering financial information and submitting it. But we try to make it as fun as possible at TCU. You, you, um, how, how, I, I've got a thought in mind that I'm not, not quite sure how to put to you. Uh, if if you're looking, oh, uh, what percentage of, of your uh, sales are new builds versus existing houses? I, if I had to put a number on it, I'd say 80% of my business is new construction. Is new construction. Has it always been that way? No, just recently. And, and since I joined TCU, that percentage has gone up. Again, I feel like we have the best product in, in the market. Uh, one of the reasons of, of that is is because we use a unique approach to um, to a, a uh, neutral opinion of value of your home. For example, every appraisal has two numbers on it, one of which is a sales comparison approach. Now that takes historical data moving backwards 12 months in time. So my argument to TCU was I, we can still use that sales comparison number, but I'm going to have to use the other number on that to really determine the value, and that's called cost approach. We are the only lender that utilizes cost approach values on appraisals, and that is a huge incentive for borrowers to work with us. A lot of times people struggle with determining that value of this not even constructed home yet uh, because they're using sales comparison number going back 12 months in time versus using that cost approach. So for that reason, we're able to determine the actual cost of the property lot that they purchased and the cost to construct the home, and we use that as our value. Okay, my next question is on the existing homes. Mm -hmm. Okay, of course I've been in my home for since 1977. That's okay, right. um, is it a good time to be selling the house, or should someone wait? I still think it's a great time uh, to list and sell your house. I think we're still re re um, recovering a lot of the equity out of our home. So whether it's a downsize or upgrade, I still think it's a great time to uh, list your home for sale. I think in the next six months, we might see um, some of those values start to dip down a little bit. But what we don't suffer in central Indiana, like other states, Arizona, California, and Florida, we don't have the peaks and valleys on our equity in our homes. We kind of stay steady right around that, yeah, yeah. right around that single digit, seven to eight percent. Sometimes we'll we'll uh, we'll get a eleven or twelve percent appreciation annually, but we're right there around ten percent appreciation almost every year, and so I, we don't see the peaks and valleys that some other states do. So it's it's I love um, working in Central Indiana. Do you have any idea how many people are employed at Teachers Credit Union? I think we have right around a thousand employees. A thousand employees, yeah, uh, and doing of course everybody's. What's the number of people in the mortgage division? In the mortgage division, I think we have about 130. And that's a fairly new division, is it not? It's it's uh, fairly new and growing um, since um, since we migrated from Mutual Bank and Northwest Bank. Um, Ryan Woodruff has built just a phenomenal team. He's taking the volume from somewhere around 50 million to last year we closed 600 million in just two years of his existence with TCU. Do you get involved? And this this applies to Carmel which is, of course, where I live, but I know it applies in Fishers, and I think it's starting to apply in, in Noblesville and Westfield, too, all those condos. Yes. Do you get involved in that? We do. There's, there's some condos that we do um, finance, and sometimes we do either the new construction on the condos or an existing condo purchase. But, yes, we do get involved with the condos. There's, those are just springing up everywhere. I think right? people like the, the ease of maintenance and, and lack of having to maintain your yard or your house, oh, sure. your house, your bushes, your landscaping, all those things. I think that uh, one-stop shop kind of mentality with condos um, is appealing to a lot of folks. Do you happen to know if the majority of those condo owners are seniors or young professionals? Or I think you hit it. I think you hit it right there on the head. I think uh, young professionals are on the go. They don't have time to cut grass or they don't have families yet. Yeah. So we see a lot of younger folks coming out of school or uh, seniors downgrading from their their Downsizing. Houses, downsizing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I see a lot of that. Uh, in interestingly, uh, you know, sometimes my wife kicks me out of the house because she's got a card group coming in. Mm -hmm. So I'll go and have lunch in, in the Arch District in Carmel, and I will speak to people, and so many of them have walked to the restaurant. Yes. Right? So that's a big selling point there. And uh, I'm sure it's becoming a selling point in, in the other cities as well. We're seeing Carmel, Fishers, Noblesville doing the same thing. People like to walk and bike to their destinations. Yeah, and yeah. they like to stay close to home. So that urban living 
like like in downtown, you can walk to a lot of places. They're creating that suburban same concept where you can walk to these communities and restaurants and, and get engaged. And people like to maintain active lifestyle. So it's very yeah. appealing to a lot of folks. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, the Monon Trail sure helps all of that. It does. Right? Indeed. Yes. Um, so um, what else do you want to talk about? We've got a couple of minutes. Sure. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for having me on the show. It's always uh, great to catch up with you. You and I have been meeting for uh, since 2013, believe it or not. You looked so it up. I did. <laughs> so, so we're going on year 10, uh, my friend. And I just really appreciate you having me here representing uh, TCU, my family, and, and our communities. I'm, I'm proud to be a member. Uh, I think Indianapolis and, and surrounding communities is the best place on the planet to live. I agree. And I agree. Uh, we just have a great community here. There's lots of caring folks. And if you want to succeed, a little hard work will get you there. There you go. Give the folks your contact info again. Thank you so much. Albert Gonzalez, Teachers Credit Union, 317-605-3383. And that's A-D, as in David, Gonzalez at TCUNet.com. Thank you for having me. And you're welcome. And again, the Gonzalez has the two Zs. That's right. Not just the one. That's right. Okay. Thanks for watching the Indy's Trusted Servant Show on InspireSmall.biz. Next week, our guest will be uh, the, the... Major Domo of the Catholic Business Exchange, my good friend Jim Liston, and he'll be talking mostly, he'll talk about Catholic Business Exchange. He's also a financial advisor with, um, doggone it, I can't think of the name of the place, but it's a big place. <laughs> but he'll be talking about their uh, nativity scene that they sell, and they're selling more and more of these nativity scenes, and he wants to make Indianapolis and Hamilton County the nativity scene capital of the world. Uh, and the nativity scenes are going to go on sale about the middle of October, and that's why he's coming onto the show pretty quickly. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Albert, good to have you, buddy. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me.